Minimum tax relief bill. It aims to spare 25 million families from a tax hike this year, uh, presumably or with, with the pretense of not adding to the deficit. It also hits uh, private equity firms with a $31 billion dollar uh, tax. Joining me now is the bill's architect, Congressman Charles Rangel, chair of the House Ways and Means Committee, and Republican Congresswoman uh, Michelle Bachman, who serves on the House Financial Services Committee. I don't think um, these two uh, people necessarily have the same feeling about it. Chairman Rangel, uh, this is, I, I know you'd like to do something more permanent. Um, this is kind of the same patch that we have to go through every year, right? But uh, you figure it's, it's worth it just to do it temporarily. It's not worth it. 25 million people will be hit with an unfair tax, but let me make it clear, I am not the architect of the alternative minimum tax, I'm the architect of trying to get rid of it. The president says we should abolish it, but to do this, we would have to borrow a trillion dollars. So he's never brought a tax reform bill to the floor, and uh, we have reported one out of the committee. But this is such an unfair tax, and everyone knows politically we're not going to let it hit. But the difference between Republicans and Democrats is that we believe that we shouldn't borrow $61 billion for a tax cut that shouldn't have been in place in the first place. And no way just not to spend the, uh, the money, just to, just, just to somehow uh, cut spending to that, so you need to, to raise it somewhere else. Does that make sense to you, Congresswoman uh, Bachman? You know, it really doesn't make sense at all to me because what this presumes is that the size of government must continue to grow. We reject that notion. There is no reason for government to continue to grow. For about 40 years, the average amount of government revenue from the entire GDP has been 18.3%. Under uh, Charlie Rangel's bill, government will grow to consume 24% of GDP. So we don't think that government needs to grow on automatic pilot. There's, there's, there's just not one Republican, and I don't, can't think of any Democrat, that's willing to say that they're going to cut back spending $61 billion. Sure. You either got Here, to raise here's, here's, a, here's, a, here's, a, here's a Republican that will cut uh, back spending. I'm There's a lot of I us. hope you're talking about the war, Michelle, because I'd be with you in a minute if we were cutting back money to stop this immoral war. I'll, I'll truth, be happy to, I'll be happy the to search the entire budget, budget well, to put Paul it back, and I think we need to because we can't continue to consume greater and greater shares of GDP. This is government growth on steroids. This is supersizing American government growth. That's not the direction that the American people want us to go. They want us to cut taxes, not increase taxes, because this bill that we're going to vote on today is a permanent tax increase to give a one-year tax cut. That's a really bad deal for the American people. Michelle, the President of the United States has constantly put this and his budget's coming forward. And so it'll be a trillion dollars to get rid of it. And he says he wants us to get rid of it, but when we try to do it, he then says we're raising taxes. So he is at, not this year, but every year after this, he's depending on the revenue in his budget, which he's put for this. And well, so you I have, can't have it both ways. Char Charlie, I have a plan, and under my plan, we repeal the alternative minimum tax altogether because this is a tax that was originally meant to impact only 155 people. It's like the blob that ate New York City. It's grown to the point now where it impacts over 25 million people. We need to scrap this terrible tax. It was a terrible idea that Congress had in the first place. We scrap the tax. We continue the tax cut that have fueled the growth in the economy since 2003, and then we offer the American people a choice. You either stay with the current system of credits and deductions, or you simplify the tax code and go with a simple flat tax. I'm a former federal tax litigation attorney. I've seen how devastating high taxes are on the middle class. And the truth be told, the bill that we're going to see today from Chairman Rangel will hurt the middle class exactly when we shouldn't also it wasn't mentioned that it has a tax increase on American energy production. That's the last thing we should do right now when Americans are paying over $4 a gallon. What, what With all that, due respect, what it, it's a terrible bill. What if it's self-defeating in that regard, Chairman uh, Rangel? I agree that we never should have had the tax in the first place, but I think that you would agree, Michelle, that this tax, if collected, 
we will be collecting $61 billion. That's right, $61 where you, billion where, dollars where that the American get, people could keep in their pocket. Where do you get the $61 billion? What we're trying we to do... We don't need to get the $61. That's no, the point. That, we can cut government spending no, by that amount. I'll the, tell you, I'm a, I'm a first-termer, and there's one thing that I've seen here in my first term. It is so easy to spend other people's money. We waste money like the American people couldn't Michelle, believe it. Shame us. Know, we shouldn't be spending right this now, money. Right Michelle, now, you, you and I know that if we don't pay for it by raising taxes, by closing loopholes, and that's what we do in my bill, then we got to borrow the money as we offer. No, we absolutely yes, don't exactly have to borrow the this, money. This we the absolutely debate. don't. That's, that's a false choice this, because we can choose to not spend that money. Why, we don't do you, have to. We need to bifurcate you, the discussion how, of AMT and spending, okay, and government spending. We, we, you, have an, you have an issue about AMT. Is the AMT make sense? Does the concept of AMT initially make sense? And was it no. execution proof? Well, I don't, I don't necessarily agree. The concept of the AMT was to make sure people paid their fair amount of tax. Like and Michelle to make sure they didn't have deductions people. that got high net worth, high p income producers to pay very little tax. That, may, that was a concept that made sense. The problem with the AMT is that the implementation of it doesn't make sense. For that example, wasn't the why problem. the problem was that we didn't adjust it for inflation. No, no, no. Why? Let me ask you this question. Well, go ahead. Why under the AMT is state taxes, which is a material component of New York City residents, why is the AMT under the AMT state income taxes and property taxes not an allowable deduction? That is clearly something that the taxpayer is actually paying to a government. But clearly, what's happening there is. There's a misallocation of taxes that that taxpayer pays to a state relative to the federal government. What never made sense to me is, yes, there are certain deductions that should be disallowed to prevent people who are manipulating the tax system, who are generating high amounts of income and not paying their fair share of tax. But when you have an AMT tax that has eliminates the ability of a taxpayer to deduct taxes they've actually paid, that makes absolutely no sense. That's right. That's exactly right. That's and that's Michelle part of the said. problem with the AMT. It we, is were, we were only talking about 159 people in 1969, and we certainly weren't talking about people that made forty and fifty thousand dollars. Now we have to correct this. And Michelle, you know that the president constantly puts this tax as though it's going to be collected, as though it's going to hit the middle class people in his budget. But if he doesn't want it, he should but take the it point out of the is, budget. The point is, we're the United States Congress. We created this monstrosity that has become a sweet darling of revenue to fund big government. We're the culprits who need to get rid of it. We have a chance today to end the alternative minimum tax. That's exactly what we the should reason, do. It was the, a bad idea, mm, and it should go but away. But the reason more people are getting exposed to the AMT is because what happened is we made tax cuts of the regular tax system, and we left the AMT tax rates unchanged. Changed. So by definition, of course, more people are going to be exposed. And what happened is the people who are beginning exposed to the AMT just didn't really enjoy the tax cuts in the regular tax system. That's why more people have gotten exposed to the AMT. And we're obfuscating the issue by saying, oh, well, you know, the exemption is not being inflation indexed. But it really comes down to the fact that we lowered the, the, the regular tax rate from 39 percent to 35, but we kept the AMT taxes at the 28, 26 and 28 percent. So by definition, when you do those calculations under the two tax systems, you're going to fall, more and more people are going to fall into the AMT. And once the, ta the tax cuts go away, you see all that, those people that were affected by AMT fall out of AMT. And well, it's, it's, so bad, it's so bad that in Minnesota, a special ed teacher married to a policeman falls under alternative minimum tax, which is the big supersized, right. supercharged tax system. That's why this is such a bad deal. Yeah, what's shocking when is people who pay the standard deduction. People who take the standard deduction That's are getting right. exposed when, to AMT. That's, right. when the That's exactly right. When the president enacted his 2001 dramatic tax cuts for the wealthy, he could have eliminated this AMT at the same time. That's what's well, really pushed but, but, people. But the wealthy didn't the enjoy real, it because the they paid point. the AMT. The real point is, this isn't about the president anymore. This is about the United States Congress and our opportunity and challenge to deal with the tax code. We can deal with it straight on and help the American people, middle class, right. by uh, cutting taxes, not permanently raising them. Right. That's what this bill does. How can you say that the president has nothing to do with it when he puts this unfair tax cut, in, I mean tax increase in his budget? 
Let's the president has taxes. everything to do with it. All right. Let's cut taxes. Uh, I reread it. Today, Chairman though. Rango, I reread it. I, I didn't say he did the AMT. This new bill. You're the okay, I'm, I, I see why you're sensitive to it. Though, because I wasn't my bill. I didn't say that about the AMT. This new bill is, is you're the architect. Though. All right. Okay. All sure. Right. Well, that's what we say. We're not going to borrow the money this time. I got the it. New bill closes $61 billion Just don't spend of, it. of tax, of tax uh, loopholes. All right. Thank you. Uh, okay. Very good. Chairman Rango, Congresswoman uh, Bachman, appreciate it. That was fun. That was fun. All right. All right. Coming up, we've got some breaking economic news. We'll get the latest durable goods data. And then you've got.